The rank nullity theorem is an important theorem in linear algebra. In this video I will show you what the theorem states and how to apply it to matrices. We will also take a look at an example. In the next video I will prove the theorem. If you are interested in the proof and want to understand it, I highly recommend watching my video about quotient spaces. We will need the things we learned about quotient spaces in the proof of the rank nullity theorem. But as I said before, you will find the proof in the next video. But first of all I will show you what the rank nullity theorem states. It states the following. Let V and W be vector spaces over a field K where the vector space V has a finite dimension. Let phi from V to W be a linear mapping. Then the dimension of the image of phi plus the dimension of the kernel of phi is equal to the dimension of the vector space V. So the theorem states that for a linear mapping phi from a vector space V to a vector space W, the dimension of the image of phi plus the dimension of the kernel of phi is equal to the dimension of the vector space V. That's what the rank nullity theorem states. Okay, I will now explain how the image and the kernel of a linear mapping phi are defined. So the image of phi is the set that contains all the vectors phi of small v, where small v is an element of the space capital V. The image of phi is a linear subspace of the vector space W. The kernel of phi is the set that contains all these vectors small v in the vector space capital V that satisfy that phi of small v is equal to zero. The kernel of phi is a linear subspace of the vector space capital V. If you are wondering why it is called the rank nullity theorem, here comes the answer. The dimension of the image of phi is also called the rank of phi and the dimension of the kernel of phi is also called the nullity of phi. That's the reason why it is called the rank nullity theorem. We will now apply that theorem to matrices. So let A be a n times m matrix with entries from the field K. You may already know that matrices describe linear mappings. That means the matrix A describes a linear map from Km to Kn where x is mapped to A times x. The rank nullity theorem holds true for arbitrary linear mappings. That means it also holds true for matrices because matrices describe particular linear mappings. So for a n times m matrix A, we have that the dimension of the image of A plus the dimension of the kernel of A is equal to the dimension of Km. That follows from the rank nullity theorem. The dimension of Km is equal to m. m is the number of columns of the matrix A. And the dimension of the image of A is also called 
the rank of A. So in the end, we get that the rank of A plus the dimension of the kernel of A is equal to the number of columns of the matrix A. That's the matrix formulation of the rank nullity theorem. We will now take a look at an example where we can use the theorem to find the kernel of a matrix without doing a single calculation. Let's take a look at the following 3 times 3 matrix A. The rank nullity theorem now tells us that the rank of A plus the dimension of the kernel of A is equal to 3, which is the number of columns of the matrix A. It is easy to see that the matrix A has rank 1, because the rank is the maximal number of linear independent rows of the matrix A. In our case, all the rows of the matrix A are the same. So the rank has to be 1, because there is only one linear independent row. From the rank nullity theorem follows that 1 plus the dimension of the kernel of A is equal to 3. So the dimension of the kernel of A is equal to 2. That means two linear independent vectors in the kernel of A already form a basis of the kernel of A. So we just have to find two linear independent vectors that satisfy that Ax is equal to zero. That's not too difficult. We will find these two vectors by taking a close look at the matrix A. It can be seen easily that the vectors small v is equal to 1, 0 and 1 and small w is equal to 0, 1, 0 are linear independent and satisfy that Ax is equal to 0. You can check this here yourself by plugging the vectors small v and small w in the matrix A. That means these two vectors v and w form a basis of the kernel of A. Which means the kernel of A is equal to the set that contains the vectors s times small v plus t times small w where s and t are elements from the field, in our case the field R. So the real numbers. Ok, I hope you now understand the rank nullity theorem a little better. As I said before, in the next video I'm going to prove that theorem. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, that would help and motivate me to keep creating videos.